We're going to look back at uh, the weekend's uh, soccer. Indeed, a bit further back than the weekend because there has been an awful lot of football in the last uh, two or three weeks. Uh, two weeks we've taken off on the stand uh, and I'm joined by Liam Brady and John Giles uh, to look back at what's been happening and some of it has been very troubling. Uh, Liam Brady, the FA Cup, uh, you and John, both of you have won that competition when it was in its most glorious days. This weekend... Most of the teams playing uh, weakened teams, in the case of Sheffield United, for example, they made 11 changes. Um, Liverpool yesterday played a, a group of kids who did really well. Um, Aston Villa played a reserve team as well. The FA Cup is losing its luster in a big way, it seems to me, Liam. Uh, that's been the case now, Eamon, for the best part of 10 years, I would have said. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it becomes, uh, I suppose, of interest to the bigger teams if they're still in it around, around the semi final stage. But up till then, they can take it or leave it, really. And the teams, uh, who are fighting relegation in the Premiership are definitely not interested in it, uh, because their priority, the money lies with staying in the Premiership and they're, they're prepared to forsake uh, the trophy of, of the chance of winning a trophy to make sure that they stay in the Premiership. It's all gone that way. Yeah, and John, it's not just the teams that are afraid of dropping out of the Premier League. It's the teams who have a chance of winning it as well because Liverpool clearly... I mean, Liverpool's situation is bizarre. They played tw uh, eight games in 22 days uh, and they've now picked up... Milner went off after six minutes yesterday... Uh, with a muscle injury, clearly playing too much football. But uh, to go back to the bigger picture, uh, the FA Cup is almost rendered meaningless, isn't it, at this at this juncture? Yeah, well, as Liam said, you go back to ten years or so, Eamon, when Manchester United, uh, with the with the, the uh, push from the FA, uh, pulled out of the FA Cup to play in a Mickey Mouse competition in South America, yeah, and they were compensated for that. So, and they were actually holders of the cup. Yep. Now that was a big that was a big deal at that particular time for them to do for them to do that. But as Liam said, there it's about money. I mean, if you win if you win the FA Cup, you get little or no money because uh, Liverpool say play a big t a small team and Anfield is packed out. They get they get thirty percent, thirty percent, thirty percent. So in the cup, there's only about six matches. Normally, about six matches. So there's little or no money in it. Yeah. And as Liam also said, teams at the bottom of the league want to stay in the Premiership. There's about 150 million to, just to stay in it. So yes. they're going to, to uh, weaken their teams and the top teams are playing for the big competitions. So that's what we have. But the FA themselves and Manchester United have a lot, uh, uh, a lot at fault for the position that the, the cup is in at the moment. Yeah, uh, Liam, that game was actually the World Club Championship, which is the thing that uh, Liverpool won uh, recently in Doha. But uh, the general uh, problem appears to be too much is being asked of players, particularly given the pace and intensity and athleticism of the modern game. I mean, eight games in 22 days is savage, isn't it? It's too much, yeah. And even, even, uh, you know, the, the, the Christmas period, yeah. I think m most teams in the Premiership played four matches in 10 days. And yeah. Nine, 10, 11 days. You know, whichever way the fixtures fell, they were playing four games. And uh, definitely as the, uh, the pace of the game has increased and it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's very easy to get injured. Not only did Milner get injured, but Harry Kane, uh, picked up a hamstring injury as well and, and a few others, I mean, you know, you can, uh, you can put that down to overplaying, but that, that's to be in the traditions uh, of the English game. I, I don't know when it started, but obviously the, the football league as it was then, the chairman must have, uh, have decided that this was going to be a cash bonanza uh, over Christmas. You were going to get big gates. Uh, and we'd make the players play as much as they could over the holiday period so they would make money 
and it hasn't changed, and I think it needs to. Yeah. Because there is a break coming up now in February, isn't there? There is, get yeah. one week off. I think one, yeah. one week. Well, why not give them one game off over the Christmas period and yeah. spread it out a bit? I yeah. think it's just tradition that's getting in the way, really. Yeah, John, the, uh, um, James Milner only lasted six minutes yesterday. Now, Liverpool have quite a, a big injury list at the moment. Fabinho out long term, Matip out long term, Lovren out. Last week, Keita, uh, he got picked up a muscle injury again. And Milner, as I say, lasted six minutes yesterday. Uh, this is really, um, killing, uh, footballers. And in this case, in Liverpool's case, they have depth in their squad, but you wouldn't want to see Van Dijk uh, Mane or Salah go the same way, and it isn't well, impossible. Well, it's affecting every club. It's not just Liverpool. No, no, of course not. See, they're, they're in the league, they're not playing any more matches than the other. They're playing 38 matches. But what they're trying to do is to cram the, the, all the other cups into yeah. into the season now. And yeah. But we used to play 42 matches. It's down to 38 matches in the league. It's not just the league that's doing it. They're cramming all the matches in to get all the cups in. You've got the League Cup now. You've got the FA Cup. You've got the Champions League. There's lo- and then they, 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 they Liverpool away in the International Cup. There's loads and loads of matches that they're trying to fit in. Yeah. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. That's why they're playing all the matches at, at the Christmas time in the Premiership League. Because yeah. they have to fit in all the other matches. Yeah. Yeah, you, it's, come, it's coming back to money. And of, and of course, it's too much on the players. You shouldn't be expecting players at, at, at any level, especially at the top level, to be playing four matches or eight matches in, in, in a certain period of time. It's absolutely ridiculous. Now, and you're going to get injuries. All clubs are going to get injuries. Yeah. Uh, and, and have done. Harry Kane is out for a while now. I see uh, uh, Maguire now is, is doubtful for the match coming at the weekend. It's bound to happen, Eamon. Mean, if you play that many matches, <laughs> they're only human beings, players. It's bound to happen, and that's what we're getting. Yeah, now let's talk about Maguire. John, you and I watched that match. Uh, we were talking to each other during the mm. match. He picked that injury up early in the first half. And he was, you could tell that he played the 94 minutes, uh, carrying an injury, uh, which was uh, remarkable, really, but, and probably very foolish. Um, but, uh, he, he clearly had the injury and it was a, it was a muscle injury and we don't know what the consequences of that are. Let's just talk for a moment about Manchester United because, uh, they played Arsenal, um, at the Emirates in the previous game. Against Wolves, John, uh, there was nothing much there, was there? They rested Rashford, but had to end up bringing him on. What do you make of Manchester United yeah. and Pogba at the, uh, and, sort of, sorry, Freudian slip? Uh, Sol- well, it is Pogba. I mean. <laughs> it is Pogba, yeah. Solskjaer at the moment. Well, yeah, well, he blew up at Van Persie the other day because Van Persie made a comment about him not smiling. Uh, he was smiling too much after the team playing well, which is a lot of nonsense, really. I mean, it goes d- deeper than Van Persie. I mean, it's 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 the situation at Manchester United uh, that they're not doing well. The team is not good enough at the moment, Damon. And the Pogba uh, uh, thing goes on and on and on, and, and Pogba is the problem. Although his, his agent said that it wasn't Pogba was the problem, Manchester United was the problem. But that's another day's work. But, uh, you know, they've got to start the Pogba situation out. I mean, Solskjaer keeps, I've seen him recently coming in the and said he's a great lad, he doesn't cause any trouble and that. The fact is, he is causing trouble. Yeah. And if, you, if that runs through a club and you're talking about morale, how can you have a, a good morale in the club when this fella, is he injured, is he not injured, does he want to go, does he want to stay? And then you've got his agent coming in, uh, criticising the club and the way man in which it's run. Yeah. I mean, don't, don't forget, this fella said that they, they, would, they would ruin... Manchester United, this is his, his, his agent, Rayala, said that they would ruin Maradona, Pelli, or, and, and Maldini if they were at the club. Yeah. But this is the agent, this is the player's agent talking like this. Yeah. It's, 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 it's outrageous, I mean, how they're putting up with it and how they're putting up with the public situation, I don't know. And they've got to, they've got to clear that out before they start going anywhere. Yeah, and Liam, I uh, noted at, uh, we'll talk about the game at the Emirates where Arsenal, um, picked up in a moment. But one of the things that uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said in a post-match interview uh, last week about the Pogba injury situation was that 
uh, Manchester United's medical people had looked at it, but he was getting different advice, and this is, I quote, from his own medical people. Now, here's a player, <laughs> uh, the most expensive player Manchester United have ever uh, bought, 100 million euro, uh, and he's got his own medical people who are in conflict with Manchester United's medical people. Are we in, you know, the real world here? Well, he's a law unto himself, Eamon, and he has been for a long, long time. Uh, and uh, Mourinho couldn't sort it out, uh, and Solskjaer's having a problem. I think Solskjaer's talking him up because he's trying to sell him. I think they'd sell him in a heartbeat if they right. could get their money back. Uh, but I don't think anybody wants him, Eamon. We've had this kind of uh, contrasting view, you and I, you were yes. saying that clubs do want him. But I think if they wanted him, they, it'll be done by now. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think they want him. I think they're looking at him, and they know he's trouble, and they know his agent is trouble. He's played eight uh, games uh, this year. So, uh, I, I, I agree with John. I don't think things can move forward until they get Pogba out of the club. Now, Liam, I want to talk to you about um, the Manchester United performance at the Emirates against Arsenal last week. It was a big match for uh, Mikel Arteta, uh, you know, in front of the home crowd. And... Uh, I certainly saw a pick-up in Arsenal's effort. Um, but I thought Manchester United didn't really have a go in the game. Uh, and I think the Pogba thing feeds, I'm sh sure you'll agree, feeds into the club, into the dressing room. Here's the most expensive player, the highest paid player in the club, acting the maggot. Um, and I thought Arsenal outfought Manchester United on the night. Did you, you were at that game, did you see that game in the same way? Yes, uh, I thought uh, Arsenal, uh, every 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 player gave gave us uh, 100%, including the ones that we've, we've talked about in the past uh, that were lacking in that regard, people like Ozil, people like Xhaka. Uh, uh, Arteta had the team organised, they knew their positions, uh, and they looked a much better outfit than Manchester United. I think Manchester United were lethargic. They looked blunt up front, Damon. Yeah. I don't think that forward line, uh, when they're up against a decent team, Marshall, Rashford, and Davis, is it? Are, yeah. uh, you know, are really, um, up to it. Uh, I, I think Rashford needs a proper centre forward to play off. I think if Manchester United had a proper centre forward, like an Aguero, like a Harry Kane, they'd be a much better team. And also in the midfield, there is no creativity. There's no creative player. They had Fred in there yeah. and uh, they had Matic in there. And really Lingard is, is looking a pale shadow of himself, uh, that he was 18 months ago. So Manchester United, although Pogba is, is a huge problem hanging over them, they've still got a team that's nowhere near the likes of Liverpool and Manchester City, even take Pogba out of the equation. Yeah, uh, John, uh, against Arsenal and against Wolves again um, on Saturday night, I thought they didn't have a go. Uh, the body language was bad. Um, even Maguire uh, in the last few games who's come in uh, has looked, uh, his shoulders are slumping. He's not looked up for it. Um, he's a player they spend an awful lot of money on. Uh, the Pogba thing is like, a, I don't want to use this word idly, but it's like a cancer. It spreads in the dressing room and on the training ground. When you have a, you, one of your big men the, the, earning the most money, costing the most in transfer terms, uh, unwilling to commit himself to the club and to the team and to what you're trying to do. But you, there's no chance of doing it, I mean, I mean no. you talk about morale, and what is morale? You know, it's very hard to build morale, but morale, in my experience, has been a group of lads together, going in the one direction, uh, the manager being in charge of the situation, and everybody going, and, and it's hard enough to win trophies with everybody doing that. When you have the Pogba situation, it raises his head nearly every week in one matter or another. Yeah. Uh, how can you build uh, morale? I mean, the, that, those lads are coming in every day, the good lads, and they're seeing uh, uh, the, the situation the way it is, particularly Pogba. 
And and we know that Pogba is not committed to the club, I mean, If he was committed to the club, he would be. He, I know he has an injury, but he'd be doing the best he can to get right, get fit, get out and play, and stop all this controversy. He's not doing that. So the other lads coming in every day, the honest lads coming in, see a guy like that. See where are we going? Yeah. You know what's, what? How can we get together? How can we go out as a team when we know this problem is there? So and, that's and, your starting point, and it's, it's not there with Manchester United. No, and of course this is Manchester United, John. Mm. Um, you know, it's a club with a massive um, pride in the past, in its history. I mean, this is the club of Matt Busby and Alex Ferguson. Mm. This yes. this kind of behaviour yeah. would be unthinkable. Can't uh, do it, Eamon. I mean, when yeah. he was a young lad, Ferguson got rid of him. He because did, Ferguson yeah. said, that, and all, all the great men said, there's no player bigger than the club, bigger than the team. And that's what's happened is the Pogba, and we're, we're talking about him now, and he hasn't played for about two, two or three months. We're still talking about him. Yeah. How can you build a team like that? If no player is bigger than the club, then he shouldn't be getting the publicity that he's getting. He should be out in the field doing, doing his stuff. Is he gone? Is he not gone? Is he going to play? Is he not gone? Is his agent coming in, making dreadful remarks about the club? How can all the other lads, the good lads there? It yes. just doesn't happen, Eamon. You have to get everything right. Ferguson wouldn't have it. He got rid of him when he was a young lad. Yeah. Incidentally, Liam, uh, I just read before we started this broadcast uh, in the Daily Mail, Lingard is now signed up to Pogba's agent, Riola, and Lingard hasn't scored a goal or made an assist for 12 months. Uh, but to go back to yeah. the... I don't want to labour the point, um, but it is actually... You played in great Arsenal teams, great Juventus teams. If you had a, a problem like this and you let it go without doing anything to uh, deal with it, it would affect morale on the training ground, in the dressing room and ultimately on the pitch. Without doubt, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I honestly, I mean, I've never experienced anything like that, you know. Yeah, I've had, I've had, I've had uh, in in my dealings with youngsters and things like that. I've had one or two that kind of thought so much of themselves that they they were a problem in the dressing room. Uh, but I've never had, as a player, or as my limited time as a manager, a player who thought he was so much better than everybody else, and he was actually. Leading people down the wrong, the wrong route as yeah. regards their careers and things like that. I've never, I've never experienced it. And it must be terrible. It must be terrible for Solskjaer to try and sort it out because you don't want to lose your, you know, his value in the transfer market. So you probably have to come out and start saying, Oh, he's a great lad and, uh, he's a wonderful midfield player. I read that he said he's a complete midfield player the other week. He, he did. Said he can play. And he, you know, different positions. You ask him to play any midfield role and he can play it brilliantly. You know, <laughs> he hasn't really helped Solskjaer whilst he's been there. No. And well, if Lingard uh, has signed up for the, his agent. I didn't know that, Eamon, but yep. uh, I think that tells a story about Lingard as well. John, does all of this, and no one wishes to be unkind to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, uh, it, it's a Terrible reflection on him. It's his reputation that's getting shredded as well, isn't it? Of course, I mean, uh, you know, he's the manager. But the, the draft asked the question: Is he the manager? You know, like if you if you go back again to Ferguson in the situation, like Ferguson would never allow this situation no. to occur. I mean, and if it did occur, and it, it's like it, it, anybody would be gone. They'd be out. Yeah. It just it just doesn't happen, you know. Solskjaer, in my opinion, he doesn't have the power there to do what's needed to be done. Right. You know, he looks like the boy to me, uh, and I don't mean this in any disrespectful way. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to him. He seems to be a very very nice lad, but this job is a big job that needs a big man to do what's needed to be done. Yeah. And it's not happening, Eamon. And it won't happen. I don't think it will happen, to be quite honest. Okay, now let's talk about a big man who tried to do that job, uh, Jose Mourinho. Uh, Liam, at Middlesbrough yesterday, Spurs played their full team, their strongest team, and there's no doubt that Jose uh, wants to, you know, add to his list of trophies. Uh, they managed uh, to get a 1-1 draw with Middlesbrough, who aren't great, um, although they've had a little run of form. Uh He's not doing great at Spurs, and he doesn't appear keen to give Troy Parrott a game or try any to play any youngsters either. 
Well, he never has, has he, Eamon? He never played any youngsters anywhere he no, was. No, no. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, they, they, there's question marks there, all right. You know, I think the, when uh, when he got the job uh, and Pochettino was sacked, I think the Tottenham supporters thought, well, oh, this will be this will be all right. We'll start we'll start pushing. We'll get into the top four, uh, and it looked like that to begin with. But they've fallen away quite badly. They only took four points over over the Christmas period, which was four games, a maximum of 16 points. They lost away to Southampton. Yeah. They drew at Norwich. Uh, you know, they got well beat, well beat uh, at the at their stadium by 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 Spur, uh, by Chelsea. Uh, so uh, even yesterday I watched uh, the match and uh, they don't seem to be firing. You know they've lost Harry Kane. It could be out for a couple of months with a bad hamstring injury, I believe. So things are 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 uh, are rocky there. Uh, I I think he is. You saw from the team he picked yesterday. He is intent on on winning the cup. Yep. He, it's, he, he he's going all out to win the cup because I think it's since two thousand and six or. 2008 that Spurs haven't won a trophy and I think he would uh, be very very popular if he could bring something like the FA Cup to Spurs this season so hence the reason I think he picked that team but they don't seem to be firing uh, something's not quite right Is it, is it possible to, I'll ask just to John and then back to you Liam is it possible John that Mourinho is yesterday's man he had a good go at United didn't really help at all before that, he had a terrible season at Chelsea, uh, and uh, at um, Spurs, he hasn't looked like a strong, vibrant, confident coach. Now, I know body language is not everything, but it's something. And I saw him in between jobs doing Sky Television with Graham Sinness, Gary Neville, or whoever, um, and... He wasn't very good at that either because he wasn't committed to it. He looks kind of broken in some way. Am I imagine? Well, do you do you get that? Well, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know that, Eamon. I mean, I, I couldn't understand him going on television because people usually go on the television when they're out of a job and they want to get a job. I know he was <laughs> looking for a job, but remember with his reputation. I didn't think that needed to go. Up, <coughs> sorry, needed to go on television and. Uh, Put himself in that position. I didn't. I didn't think he was very committed to the television either, Eamon. No. But if, if you look, if you look at the thing with 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 Spurs now, you see what when things are going his way, he's great. Uh, but when things go slightly against him, Eamon, he hits out. Yeah. And but there was there was there was a sign of that. I mean, more of a sign of that a, a couple of weeks ago when he had a right go at uh, you can pronounce the lad's name for me, Tang, oh, yeah. Tangai and Dembele. And, and Dembele, yeah. M. Dembele. Yes, right? there's a player they uh, just bought. He, he looks quite useful too. Yeah, but the, what, he, but what he said was it, when, he, when he, he didn't play, he said he's injured, he's not injured. He plays one week, next week he's injured again. He then plays another match. In other words, this is the first time, now very early in, in his career of sports, he's having a go at a player straight, straight away. Yeah. Now when things are not going his way, he hits out. That's what he did at Manchester United. I think was that was the major reason he left Manchester United. He, he, he criticised about at least 10 players at Manchester United publicly yeah. and in a bad way. Now things are not, he's lost a couple of matches, he's having a go at this lad. So you don't know, it, but when everything is going well, Eamon, he, then everything he's, he's great, and he, and when he went to Chelsea, if you go back to, originally when he came to Chelsea, he had a good lot of players. They did well from the start. I, I think it's when the team doesn't do well. Then when he's at his worst, he hits out and he upsets the players. Now, if Spurs don't pick up, he probably hit out again. So whether he's you know whether he's yesterday's man or not, obviously if he's not doing his stuff, uh, then he will become yesterday's man. But I think that's one of the reasons that he doesn't do his stuff, if the players are not doing well, uh, he, it's never going to be his responsibility, he's going to hit out, and I think he's hit out already at one of the sports players. Yeah, and uh, Liam, I take it you'd agree with John that when people go on television to do an analysis of uh, football matches, that's you know something that serious people shouldn't be doing, uh, and you only do it when you're desperate. <laughs> Well, I don't know about that. I, mean, I don't think he was trying. To, I don't think he was trying to keep himself in the public eye. Uh, yeah. he's 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 far too big for that. He maybe he likes the money, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
yeah. he was doing adverts on TV for Paddy Power as well, I believe. Yeah, so, absolutely, uh, which is another sort yeah, of... Yeah, you know, I think yeah. he, he likes his few Bob. I can't blame him for that, but... Uh, I want to ask you uh, the question. I, 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 I think there is an element that he's, 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 his time is up. Yes. Uh, I think the players, having looked at him over the course of the last 10 years, he can't help but think this bloke thinks it's all about himself. Yeah. You know, and I think this disguise that he that he put out, and mainly in, in the Chelsea era and uh, Inter Milan, they bought into it. You know, the players bought into the fact that here we have a strong leader, he's different, he's he's controversial, we're going to be with him. Yeah. You know, but of the last 10 years, I think the, la- the latter five years have been very questionable. I thought his time at Real Madrid, he behaved abominably. Yes. Uh, his time at Manchester United when he started, you know, blaming the players as John has gone into and that press conference is saying, I deserve more respect. I've won three premierships more than all the premiership put together. You know, yeah. if you're a player, you're looking at that, you know, what's this bloke all about? You know, and I think might be an element of that at Spurs there. Yes. There's a few players there want away. Ericsson was looking at the, what might happen at the end of the season, if not this window. I don't think Mourinho has the respect of the players that once was in place. Yeah, just a point I'd like to make, John, about that. Um, I think the game has changed too. Uh, if, if you look at uh, the Liverpool, uh, the Manchester City, it's much more attacking. It's not the old Mourinho saying, clean sheet, clean sheet, nick a goal, or even with his great teams uh, at uh, you know, at Chelsea with Pogba, uh, rather with Drogba, uh, and you know, uh, John Terry and these guys, uh, clean sheet, clean sheet, keep it tight. That's changed, hasn't it? I think Liverpool and particularly Manchester City and Guardiola have changed that, uh, and that's his basic way of going about it. Uh, no, I wouldn't agree with you entirely there. I wouldn't, no. I wouldn't agree elements of it. I think when he uh, when he was at Chelsea and at his best, I mean, he scored a lot of goals as well. I don't, oh, I, yeah. no, I don't go, I don't go with the idea that he was just a defensive coach and nicked the goal. He scored as many goals as anybody else. What he did, and 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 he did very well. He defended very well. Yes, he had good defenders, great defenders, and. The, the, the reason I think he was called a defensive manager because when the likes of teams attacked him, they didn't let them score. So there they were. Therefore, they were defending yep. longer than say Arsenal, who once somebody was got at them, they'd score. He wouldn't let them score, so he was defending longer. Like to get the stats nowadays, what they would say was Marino defended lo- uh, longer than anybody else because he wasn't conceding goals. Yeah. Um, so I don't I don't believe in, in the old fashioned way. Whatever it is now, it, it's, it's when he went to Chelsea again. He had young lads, good lads there, and they took off straight away. And then he's okay. If he sits a bad spell, it's never his fault. And that's what's happened in recent times. I'd say he's, he's he knows that the, the game is just as good as it was, but he doesn't have the players that he had in the old days. Right. Um, just a, a final point uh, about Mourinho, Liam, uh, and it's this that uh, you can be get to a stage in that game as a player or uh, and particularly as a coach where the jobs that you that are really uh, good to take are, are beyond you. In other words, you've got to take jobs that don't look so great. The Spurs job at the moment being the case, following Pochettino, they've just built a stadium. They're not going to have the money to allow him to go out and get players he'd really want. So Spurs probably aren't... A, a perfect club you'd pick if you were ambitious. Um, and he's in that sort of space as a coach now and in that time of his life where he hasn't got the pick anymore, his welcome is worn out in most places. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I, I, I think he had the pick going back to when he was uh, appointed Manchester United coach. He still had that status yes. where he he could say, well, this is the club for me, you know. Yes. When he went there, uh, he was probably at his, 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 his most powerful, uh, thinking that way, you know. Yes. Uh, but he'd, ha- he'd had problems at Chelsea in that last season at Chelsea. Remember, he fell out with the doctor publicly. Yes. Uh, there was all sorts of problems with, with him off the pitch. And, uh, and he took that into the Manchester United situation. He started criticising the players. Let's not forget that 
he it was on his watch. I know you're probably going to turn around and say to me that uh, Ed Woodward bought Pogba, but surely Mourinho had a say in it. You Absolutely, know? no, uh, no but, I, I totally uh, Pogba, agree. Yeah. Pogba was brought back to the club under Mourinho's management, uh, and the whole thing uh, w- w- was a mess. Now he he, he 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 isn't of the same status. That that's that's quite apparent. Yes. Uh, but the Spurs job, the Spurs job, they're still a good team, man. And they were Champions League finalists last year, you know. Yeah. And there's a lot of talent in the team. Um, you know, a far easier job to go in there than it is to go in Arsenal, having the having the squad that Arsenal have at the moment. Yes. Uh, so he really should be doing better. But I have a feeling he's 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 over the top. He's 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 he's, he's on his way down. Yeah, I must say I share that feeling and. Uh, I would also point out to listeners who I'm sure are Spurs fans are aware of it that Ericsson can talk to other clubs as of now. Uh, the Vertonghen uh, hasn't signed a new contract. I think Danny Rose uh, is also going to be out of contract pretty soon uh, and he's got that problem to deal with. Just a final uh, point, uh, John Everton. I've seen him twice now in the last few days. Uh, against Manchester City and against Liverpool yesterday, they spent a mm. hundred million or thereabouts in the summer, and they bought mm. a load of rubbish. And they didn't have a go against City. God knows how they only lost two one. For Carlo Ancelotti, who's been such a great coach and a great football man, I was I felt sorry for him standing on the touchline yesterday, looking at his team, mm. who didn't mm. really have a go. They they had a go for about twenty minutes. Didn't get uh, uh, the goal they deserved, probably, and then packed it in. Yeah, oh, it's a big job for him, Eamon. Um I, 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 I certainly wouldn't like to be backing him to do do well in a hurry. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know the Everton the Everton situation is, is is a bit of a mess to say the least. But you'd have to go back to the start of the season, close season, Eamon. Who bought the players? Yeah. Uh, I don't think the manager did, to be quite honest. No. Uh, and and they're stuck now. With the, or he is stuck now with the players that were brought in. Will he have the resources to 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 improve it? It, it, it could be doubtful uh, because they're stuck with a lot of very very ordinary players. And as you say, didn't have uh, didn't play particularly well at uh, against Manchester City and packed it in last night. Yeah. Uh, against you know a, a, a absolutely amazing. Liverpool, young lads, yeah. absolutely amazing. They were absolutely brilliant. But that's by the way. They had chances early on, early. I mean, as you say, the goalkeeper did very well. Adrian did very well to keep them out. Uh, but from the whole of the second half and before the second half, uh, they were they were disgraceful. Yeah, they were. Uh, Liam, Ancelotti is a sort of a renowned figure, really. Great Italian uh, coach and player. Did you play in... Against him, did you know him? Uh, he seems he's got a great record as a coach. Yeah, I know him. I, mean, I played against him. He played for Roma, then he went on to Milan, played in that great Milan team that uh, yes had uh, Rijkaard and Van Basten, Maldini, Varese, all those guys. Ancelotti was a really good player, and he's been a brilliant manager. But I think, like everything else, you know, you get on a bit, one job leads to another. He's been at some great clubs, uh, probably badly treated by Abramovich at Chelsea, but went on to manage Real Madrid, went on to manage Bayern Munich. I think a bit like Mourinho, perhaps he's just, you know, on the, on the way down now. Yes. Uh, and, uh, he, he, uh, I spoke to him, funny enough, only a couple of weeks ago, uh, before Arsenal played Everton at Goodison Park. Yeah. I was in the director's box and he was there and we had a little chat. And I think he's glad, very happy to be back in English football. Right. I think Italian football is a bit crazy at the moment, you know. Yeah. And he's glad to be out of. He's at Naples, and I think where the president was telling them who to pick and when the players had to go away before matches and things like that. He wasn't running the show, so he'll. I think he'll do a job, but it won't be. It won't be in a hurry, as John says. You wouldn't be betting him to turn things around and Everton to become a top six club next season. I think it's going to take. A fair bit of time and better and better buys in the transfer market, as you say. Yeah, uh, they've spent an awful lot of money and they haven't had much return for it. So a charming, a charming man, Liam. Uh, it, yeah, really nice man, really football man through and through. Uh, and I hope he does. I hope he does well. Everton are a smashing club. 
Yeah. And you'd like to see them do well, you know, but uh, it's going to take a while to turn things around. And, and the question marks have got to be asked on who is buying the players. But there's a number of clubs that have wasted a load of money. My club, Arsenal, is one of those as well. Uh, Arteta has just come into the job the very same time as Ancelotti came into the job. It's going to take him a bit of time, a fair bit of time to, to get things back on track at the Emirates. OK, uh, Liam and John, uh, thank you both very much for joining us and a Happy New Year to both of you. That's uh, John Giles and Liam Brady, both of whom uh, have FA Cup winners' medals and lots of other things uh, as well.